from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English. Ramping Up Your English is for English language learners from all language backgrounds who have already begun the process of learning English as their second language. It's a program for people of all ages. If you're seeking greater English proficiency, this program is designed to help you reach that goal. Ramping Up Your English is a support program for English learners who already have passed the beginning stages of learning English. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach greater English proficiency. We use English to teach English. The theme of our first unit is Trains and Railroads. This is Episode 17, Segment 1. You're in for a great treat today. Riding the famous California Zephyr through Utah and Colorado, you're on schedule for seeing some of the greatest trackside scenery in the world. I can hardly wait to share the ride with you. Well, in fact, I can't wait any longer. Let's hop aboard for Part 2 of Amtrak's California Zephyr Eastbound. In part one of the California Zephyr, we departed from Sacramento to trace the Transcontinental Railroad in reverse. We climbed into the Sierra Nevada mountains, learning how the Central Pacific Railroad depended on Chinese work crews to build this end of the line. We passed beautiful but tragic Donner Lake and emerged into much drier Nevada, following the Truckee River. We saw a day turn to night in the Nevada desert. We awoke to some of the most spectacular scenery in America. They give this country the name Ruby Canyon for the deep red color of the rock. This is one place we're grateful to be on a train. Amtrak takes us through this Red Rock Canyon country following the California Zephyr route on the former Rio Grande Railroad, a true mountain railroad if ever there was one. We see a fantasy landscape here of palaces and sculptures made of stone. A fantasy landscape, only it's real and we can take it all in without having to watch the road. Like being at Disneyland. Yep, only it's real. Sometimes it's very quiet on the train, and you can just look out the window and watch the scenery go by. We follow the Colorado River to Glenwood Springs, about to enter more breathtaking landscape. Pulling out of Glenwood Springs at mid-afternoon, we're headed to Glenwood Canyon, where a landslide in 2007 left passengers stranded for several hours. Here across the river is Interstate 70, reminding me how lucky I am to be on a train. And here we enter the magnificent Glenwood Canyon. These great views are from the dining car. You can hear my wife talking to fellow passengers. Uh, we came uh, a couple of years ago at this time of year. Now we got off at Glenwood Springs. Oh. And, oh. and kind of just were tourists around Glenwood Springs. How far are you going? Washington, D.C. The train stopped here while we kept eating. Outside the train, we watched this magpie. So the rest of us don't have to say we don't want to see It was noticeably more quiet when we went back to our roomette and enjoyed this view of the Colorado, 
At this elevation, you can see ice forming on the edges of the river. One of my favorite views is of the train itself. The higher we rose in elevation, the more ice we saw in the river. These are the Rocky Mountains. This ski resort led right into the mouth of the huge Moffat Tunnel. On the other side of that six mile tunnel, there were more mountains. We joined other passengers in the viewing car for this scene. Suddenly, we're looking down at the edge of the Great Plains. Many people consider the California Zephyr the most scenic train in the United States. I say it's a toss-up with the Coast Starlight. As we pull into Denver, our second day on the California Zephyr is drawing to a close. We'll leave Denver in the dark passing coal trains through the night. Rolling into Denver. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. We're learning English while enjoying a video about trains. You just got to see some of the best railroad scenery in the country. The Rio Grande Railroad chose the rugged Rocky Mountains as their territory to compete against Southern Pacific. In the freight hauling business, they matched Southern Pacific's long, sometimes slow trains with short, fast ones. When it came to passenger service, the three railroads, Burlington, Rio Grande, and Western Pacific, developed the greatest of streamliners to attract passengers back to the rails. These trains had dome cars for viewing more of the mountain scenery. Their message to travelers was clear. The journey was the destination, the real vacation, a heritage carried on by Amtrak today. We'll learn more about mountain railroading and how to use English to describe it when we return. This is a Ramping Up Your English book review. If you're enjoying our theme of trains and railroads, you might want to check out a catalog from Historic Rail. Their free catalog is aimed mostly at model railroad enthusiasts, but I found some treasures in here worth spending a few dollars on. Sometimes I don't order anything, but I still enjoy the pictures of trains from railroads that no longer exist. This cover features the Burlington Northern, the railroad that pulled the California Zephyr from Chicago to Denver. You can order a model engine or artwork of Burlington Northern, this passenger train pulling into the station. Some pages are devoted to a single railroad like the Great Northern, whose Empire Builder route is now operated by Amtrak. Or the Santa Fe, with its distinctive war bonnet that's designed on its locomotive. Passengers on Amtrak Southwest Chief are retracing the route of the Chief, a famous route operated in the past by Santa Fe railroads. Model railroading is a hobby that's too expensive for me, but I've enjoyed videos, books, and t-shirts that I've ordered over the years. Visitors can visit their website. A book review on a catalog? Why not? I'm John Letts.